this is Craig and Celeste with Socata Grove, and today we are going to be tasting Cecropia fruit. Now, Cecropia is it's a pretty tree, it's very tropical, it's very cold sensitive. Ours got obliterated in the frost earlier this year, and then it grew back so nicely, and then it got re obliterated in the hurricane. <laughs> So and it right, has new growth now. It has new growth. It, it's it's a fighter. Um, it doesn't like standing water. So I had another one that I had in a, the tortoise pen, yeah. and we lost it from standing so, water. So you want it on a mound. When we lived in Ecuador, we Cecropia grew everywhere. And it's one of the favorite foods of sloths. If you have a pet sloth, Cecropia like to eat the leaf. Which we did. Which we did. <laughs> um, it's not really well known for its fruit. I never saw anyone eat the fruit in Ecuador, ever. I People would yeah. use the leaves as umbrellas. Yeah. Um, we never had, even though we got 24 feet of rain there, there was tropical soil leaching. Like, there wasn't the same type yeah, of soil, so was, water there was, was everything never Everything that grew standing. there was, swor well, yeah, but it was, anyway. So this is the fruit. It looks kind of like... A dead man's finger. A gu gummy worm. Well, there's a different <laughs> fruit called dead man's finger. It's, 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 I guess there's some yeah. similarity. <laughs> Kind of like a gummy worm. Um, yeah, it feels like this, a gummy worm. This actually might be a little old fruit because we've been sitting on the counter for a while. No, I just picked this today. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. I thought we had some that had been sitting there a while. We did, and then... Oh, okay, so this isn't it. It, um, it really feels like gummy fruit. We should freeze dry some of this. I'm curious what it would do when you freeze dry it. It's got a dry skin. It feels kind of like a, a dead lizard. lizard. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah. Really typing it I think, up. Yeah, they were really selling this, huh? And if you squeeze it, like goo comes out. So anyway, <laughs> you can pull it. There's like a yeah, a middle like it's, a lizard tail. It tastes. Middle. It's okay. It tastes. It's sweet. It tastes a little bit. It's a little bit like eating a strawberry, but not that we we. It doesn't have any of the tartness. It's just got some sweetness to it. I like the texture a lot. Well, the texture to me is what kind of reminds me of a skin of a strawberry because it's got kind of this rough, scaly kind of outside skin that's a little bit like a strawberry. Yeah. There's something about it. it doesn't taste it's like a strawberry. It's the same either. sensation as eating a peep. You eat a lot. I haven't had peeps in a long time, but there's something that reminds me of like the marshmallow. Because it's got that skin on it. It's got a. It's got a. Like. It feels I like, that part wasn't nearly as ripe as. And see, sometimes you mm -hmm. can. It's really ripe. The the, the yeah, core the, will come. The middle out. part feels really gross. <laughs> it's not like it's slimy. It's dry. The outside is dry and a little kind of mm -hmm. scaly. Um. It just has a sweet taste. I guess a little bit like a dragon fruit. It does taste a little bit like dragon fruit. Um. Where there's no complex flavor. But it's just got like some sweetness. A berry and watermelon. I yeah. think taste more watermelon than berry. This one it. tastes. Well, this one. This is actually better than most of what I remember. There. Nobody's gonna go out and and say what how great the fruit is that it's so flavorful, but it's good. There are little pieces it's that feel sweet. like when you bite the. the it's like fruit strawberry to the seeds. Strawberry. What's yeah. That, is that? They're called akines. They're okay. actually the fruits that people call them seeds. But anyway. Um, it's a little bit like that, and there's a little thing, like little seeds that can feel like seeds. Uh, it's actually a very important uh, food for fruit bats. Florida doesn't have any fruit bats. Too bad. So, but in Ecuador, the bats ate this, but people didn't. It's okay. I mean, I'd eat it again. It actually, the trees produce a lot of this, mm -hmm. and it'll fall to the ground when it's ripe. Um, I think you probably picked this, but it was... I did pick it because I didn't want it yeah. to go to waste. Um, it's okay. I've had worse by a long shot. Um, I'm glad I have a tree. It's like just I not that dynamic. A it's a cool tree. tree. It, it's a big tree. It's a spreading tree. If you don't want to put this, if you've got a small yard or on a corner or anywhere where it, it, it it's a, it's a, not a really super tall tree most of the time, but it gets very wide and it will take up a lot of I space. I think ours got wide because it froze, and then it shot all these branches. Most it, of I the think... ones that I've seen in Florida, mm. now in Ecuador, they, they get tall. to be kind of a nice, straight, tall round tree. The most I've seen in Florida get pretty, are shorter and wider. Um, but it's a big tree, so don't don't put it where it's 
Uh, I mean, it's just, it's not, it's like a... I couldn't put it in my little paver garden yeah, where I have the cinnamon it's gonna, tree. It's going to spread out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to want some space. But um, it's a pretty tree. It's a very tropical looking tree. Um, like I said, ours got smashed twice this year and it's recovered nicely both times. Um, it, it's more of a, what do you call it, like a centerpiece tree? It's more of a... a Statement tree. Usually. Yeah, it's more of a decorative tree than than you grow up for the fruit but the fruit's not bad um the trunk is kind of like papaya if you've ever had a papaya die back and you cut it where it's sort of like bamboo where there's like hollow sections and then yeah so like when it froze back i made sure to cut it so there wasn't like a cup on top I yeah i was doing some air layers on some and ran into some of that and made it a little harder to the oh, older stuff you itchy couldn't. too right yes i forgot about that it's itchy I also noticed, found that out. Um, I never noticed that when we were in Ecuador, but I, when I was putting air layers on this thing, this tree made me very itchy. It's got little, it's kind of like bamboo where you work with it and it gets kind of little sketchy, and gets it little stained. hairs. Didn't it stain? It did. I actually, uh, I, I had some sap, I, I, ends that I'd cut off after the freeze, I think, or maybe it was a hurricane, and it had sap and I bumped my white shirts into it and it was exactly stained just like banana sap does. So, um, just things to be so aware yeah, of. so yeah. there's some downsides. It's not the perfect tree, but um, but it's interesting and the fruit is edible. I want to, I'm going to plant another one of our air layers just to have a backup because I really because it took such a beating this year, it did. And I really, <laughs> I might do some under an oak just for some cold protection, but I need like a good spot, yeah. Um, like, there are probably lots of different species. So the one we had in Ecuador was could have been could a different very species. Much, yeah, very I remember the leaves being way more full and yeah, useful as an umbrella than a, the one we had. I don't had even now. know how many species there are. So. Maybe a ton, like yeah. Inga. So it could be could have been a different species down there, but don't know. But it's a cool tree. Um, I wouldn't recommend it to everyone, but if you have an area that would like a nice kind of a spreading, showy tropical tree that will produce edible fruit and like it's probably not a bad choice mound but it, take it some plateau space. it or have it in a like plant it like you would an avocado yeah i mean, don't you don't want it in a super low area and don't plant it way inland in florida i think we're probably yeah like, it, it, you need to be close to the water ours got from the now when we hit now we had a lot of things that got damaged from the coldish do we know where the temperature it was like 28 to 28 26. yeah um so we had things that you know, our mangoes even got damaged some, but this went down, was down to a stump, and we didn't know if it was going to come back at all, and it did, but, eh. And we mulched we it really sure. heavy before the cold, and yeah. I put a trash can over it. That, after it froze the first after, night, yeah, and then the second the night, we put a trash can over too late it. Then, but. but maybe it kept it alive. Who Could knows? Have been. It? Could have been. <laughs> but it was marginal, So, and we're in Sarasota, so if you live in... Clear water, you might not want to plant it. Mm, actually, unless you're oh, like right on the water. If you live in in Winter Haven, I probably wouldn't. But they were warmer than us oh, this year, they? though. Yeah. yeah, this was a bad year for us. Anyway, that's uh, Cecropia, and I put it more. It's it's not delicious, but it's good. It's and not it's as interesting. good as Inga, but the texture is better than Inga. I'm not sure I wouldn't put it equal to Inga flavor-wise. Because Inga is just sweet to me, Craig too. Craig is this... not a connoisseur of Inga. I guess not. Anyway, <laughs> that's the croppy. I hope you enjoyed watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.